right, I guess there's some questions about doing FIFO, LIFO, and uh, perhaps weighted average. So let me just run through a quick example. So FIFO is first in, first out. So if you think of a grocery store, when they get milk or potato chips or anything with a date on them, the first items that they bring into the store are the first items that they want to go out through the register, meaning the, the items that are going to have the oldest date should be the items that go through first. So when they restock new product, what they do is they put it behind the older product so that people take the older product out of the store first. Now, so that would be an example of FIFO. LIFO is last in, first out. So pretend that you had a lazy stock person, they walk into a store, they just push all of the old stock to the back of the shelf, replace it all with the new. Now what's confusing, everybody understands that concept quite well. What's confusing is that for accounting purposes, that has no correlation to how it actually flows on the shelf. This is how we are going to account for the items that we purchase. So often, again, milk at Walmart, when they buy that milk, you have no idea of knowing whether that milk cost you $3.10 that day or if it cost you $2.50, kind of like the gas <laughs> at the gas station. That price varies daily, sometimes hourly, what they're actually paying for their gas. So in accounting, once it all gets mixed in that tank underground, we have no idea when somebody buys gas, whether they bought the gas that cost two fifty or whether they bought the gas that cost that particular gas station $3.10. So we have to have an orderly way to do that in accounting, and so we have these inventory methods, FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. So again, it has no correlation to how we actually handle the inventory I'm just trying to give you an example there, but how we actually handle the costing of it on our books. So let's just start with a basic example. So we started with, on October 1st, 20 units that cost $55 each for a total of $1,100. So if we use this nice little handy chart, which I think is very similar to your homework, then you'll see in your inventory you have $1,100 worth of product. So then on the 4th, we buy... Uh, 30 more units at $60. So that would be $1,800. There's no pause here. Okay, so here's the part that students don't like to do. Let's carry down what we already had in inventory that's going to help us keep track of what we had there and the cost of those particular. And then we're going to add to that the new purchases of 30 units at 60, which is 1800 And then if we total that up, we should get $2,900. So we now have $2,900 worth of merchandise available for sale, and that is 50 units total. So then let's say on the 12th, now we sell 38 units. Okay, so out of 38 units, so we have to figure out, out of the available 50 units here, we're selling 38. So first in, first out. Which were the first items that we brought into the business? Well, that would have to be these 20 that we had. So those 20 are going to be the first ones to go out the door. So we'll have 20, and those cost $55, so that's $1,100. But we sold 38, so we need to come up with another 18 units from this batch of 30. So we'll put 18, and those cost 60. So let me do the math. So that was 1080. So if we add those two together, you'll see, if I did my math correctly, that my cost of goods sold on that particular sale was 2180, and I sold 38 units. Now what we have to do is go ahead and update our inventory balances here. So I no longer have any of those 20 at 35, so those were sold. What I do have left are 30 minus the 18, or 12 at 60, and I often will write the 60 in there, and then we need the inventory balance there too. Okay, so we were left with 12 at 60, which is $720. Let's go on to the next item, which is on October 22nd. Oh, I don't like that color here. Hang on. Get something a little darker. We purchased 48 at 64. So 48, oops, at 64. 
So we have 12 at 60, which we said was 720. And now we're going to bring in the new 48. Sorry, my little uh, stylus isn't cooperating too much at 64. And that was 3072. Okay, so I went ahead and totaled those up. So we have 60 units at $37.92 would be the cost for all those 60. And then, now let's say we sell 35 on the 31st. So the question is, out of these items, where do we sell 35? Under FIFO, the first ones in, which are the 12, will be the first ones out. Under LIFO, the last ones in, which would be out of the 48, would be the first ones out. So we're selling 35, we need to sell all 12 that had a cost of 60, which is 720. And then we need 35, um, so in order to get to a total of 35, we need 23, and 23 units will then have to come out of that group of 48 that we have here. And those cost $64 each. So 23 times 64 is 1472. Okay. Then we'll add that together, 720. That's 2192. Okay. So here's the interesting part. Um, let's see if I can move my slide up a little bit. A little bit. Didn't work quite the way I wanted, but oh well. So when you go to calculate now, cost of goods sold, when you go to calculate cost of goods sold, it's going to be these two numbers added together. So if we add those two together, 2180 and 2192, you should get 4372. So my total cost of goods sold here is 4372, and we sold 73 units. Now let's go over to finish our inventory balance. So we had 48 at 64 right here, and we ended up selling 23 of those. So what we would have left in our inventory is 43, I'm sorry, 48 minus the 23, which is 25 units. And those were at 64, which is 1600. So ending inventory is $1600. And my cost of goods sold is $43.72. You really have to be careful. Are they asking you for the cost of goods sold or the ending inventory? I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you.